Hello everyone and welcome to this Google Digital Garage training session all about creating video for YouTube. My name is Kirsty and I'm a skills trainer for this Google Digital Garage program. I've been working in the industry now for around six or seven years and I absolutely love helping people with that idea, with that passion, get started with creating their space online to connect with the right people. But I'm not here alone. You may have already seen our lovely moderator, Samantha, say hello in the chat. So if you haven't headed over to that chat, please do. Samantha is also a Google Digital Garage trainer and mentor and is going to be there throughout the whole session answering questions, dropping in some links for you and letting you know what's coming up next in the session. I'm going to jump into some housekeeping. If you haven't already said hello, please do go into that chat, introduce yourself, say hi, let us know where you're signing in from today. And are you looking to create content for YouTube? Have you already got a channel? Or are you brand new and you're looking to get started with your YouTube channel? So while you introduce yourself and say hello to Samantha in the chat, I'm going to start breaking down a couple of bits of housekeeping. So first of all, if you have any trouble hearing or seeing this webinar, try refreshing your browser. That can really help you fix anything that's, that's happening, blurry video, bad sound. Hopefully that will fix anything that's, that's not quite working for you. If you'd like to join in with that chat that I was talking about, if you're on a computer, it should be to the right hand side of this video. However, if you're on a mobile device or a tablet, it might be just below the video. I will be pausing throughout the session to answer any questions that pop up. So feel free, put them in the chat. Samantha's there as well. So you've got the two of us ready and waiting for any questions that you have as we move through the whole of this content. And finally, just to let you know, this is not a standalone session. We are offering a huge range and upcoming schedule for all future sessions on Google Digital Garage. So please do go to the link in the description of this video, check out the schedule and have a look to see if there's anything else in that broader offering that's going to interest you. And also, uh, Samantha will definitely pop that link for you in the chat. So if you can't find that in the description, check out the chat and hopefully you'll see that there. Uh, Great Dane Diving from Cyprus. Hello. I actually grew up in Cyprus. Fun fact. Um, and I am a scuba diver. So this is incredible. Hello. Um, just booked flights back to Cyprus for uh, the beginning of June. That is very cool. Small world. But welcome to everyone saying hi. Zoom Academy there. Hello, hello. Um, who else have we got? Uh, Robert, hello. All the way from South Carolina in the US. Amazing. So many of you saying hello. So we're global today. Um, great to have you. Let's jump in, shall we? Let's have a think. Keep introducing yourself. I'll keep um, having a look and, and seeing what's coming through in the chat as well. So we're going to break up this session into three really clear sections. Part one, starting to think about your niche, starting to think about, okay, how do we niche down? How do we understand what we're passionate about? And then from there, we can start to think about our audience. Um, oh, we have Dazarati there from India and we have Ahmed. Hello, hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So first part, find your niche. Second, we're thinking about creating that content. And how do we make it engaging? Really, really important. And then finally, how do we make sure that we've really clearly decide, des, defined what success is and tracked exactly the, the metrics that we need to understand that we are being successful in what we do with our video content on YouTube? So that's how we're going to break up the session over the next 50 minutes or so that we've got left together. But I do also want to point out this amazing opportunity for a one-to-one -one with a Google trainer, mentor, coach, like Samantha, like myself, you can book a one hour free mentoring session to talk about anything with your business. Now, this is open mostly to those UK businesses, charities, um, and sole traders as well. So it's not just people that work within an organization. And you can take that link, g.co forward slash UK mentoring. Again, I'm sure Samantha will pop that in the chat for you. And you can book a one-to-one -one session to start to talk about anything within those range of digital skills where you think you might need a little bit of support 
in regards to building a digital marketing strategy. Maybe you want some support when it comes to looking at analytics and metrics and collecting that data. So you can really start to think about what it is you want to talk about in that hour. So kicking off with some statistics, 2 billion logged in users every month on YouTube. That's, that's about one third of the internet log into YouTube every single month. A third of the whole entire internet. Just about, just under a billion hours of video are watched every day on YouTube. And it's the second largest search engine next to Google in the world. Now that last one in the green box, 500 hours of video is uploaded every minute to YouTube. It's really interesting because if you think about how long it would take you to watch a day's worth of content that's uploaded to YouTube every hour or every minute, every day, that's going to take you at least about 85 years to watch all the content that's been uploaded in one day. Just put that into context for you. So we've got a lot of content circulating across loads of different niche topics, loads of different industries, loads of different disciplines, so many things going on. So what we can start to think about are the four essential values of freedom. Now, YouTube's mission is to give everyone a voice and allow that voice to be shown across the world. So they focus on these four essential values of freedom. The first one, freedom of expression. On YouTube, people can express express themselves, their stories with the whole world. And it's the idea that everyone has something important to say. YouTube believe that people should be able to speak freely, share opinions, foster that open dialogue, and have that creative freedom that leads to new voices, new formats, and new possibilities. The second, freedom of information. Everyone should have easy, open access to information that vid and that video is a hugely powerful force when it comes to education, building understanding and documenting anything that's going on in the world, whether that be big or small. So it doesn't matter whether your passion is cars or cakes. There is a space for you on YouTube. There's a space for you to find that passion and find your community on YouTube. The third essential value of freedom is the freedom of opportunity. What we mean by this is on YouTube, anyone can follow their passion, create something that everyone can watch. Everyone should have a chance to be discovered, build a business and succeed on their own terms. And the people, the viewers, the users, not a set of gatekeepers are the people that decide exactly what's popular. And the final one, freedom to belong. Everybody should be able to find a community of support, break down barriers, transcend borders, and come together around those shared interests, shared passions, and that build that community, that freedom to belong. So really interesting when we start to think about what's out there on YouTube, the type of videos that are out there and how we can start to create for our businesses and our brands, our own space that's gonna communicate with that niche audience. So step one is to find your niche, is, niche, is to understand exactly why you wanna create content for YouTube. And the way we can do that is to think about your what, your why and your who. So what's your channel going to be about? Do you know what it's going to be about? Why are you there? Why are you going to create this content? What's the purpose? And finally, who is that content for? Who's your audience? Who's going to watch your videos? Who's going to help you decide how you create that content that speaks in a certain way for those specific people? So by creating this full rounded idea of exactly what you're doing, why you're doing it and who you're doing it for can start to help focus your attention and create content that has a, a clear purpose. So starting with the what. What's your channel 
going to be about. Define your passion. And there's a um, explanation there, a definition on passion, which is a strong or extravagant fondness, enthusiasm or desire for anything. One of the best things about YouTube is that you can engage with, start to grow community, um, no matter what your passion is. Whether it's comedy, sports, fashion, gaming, food, life, vlogging, get ready with me, makeup, it doesn't matter what it is. There's going to be a community out there that you can start to engage with, with your content. And you have the power to connect with such a huge diverse audience that that share those passions so when it comes to defining what your passion is ask yourself questions right what what are my values what are my beliefs what am i passionate about have i got a story that i can share with this particular audience and if you're here today thinking well i, I want to get on youtube but i'm not i'm not sure yet what i want that channel to be about um i'm thinking kind of around certain topics but I'm not I haven't quite picked yet start to search through the content that you enjoy think about what you like watching think about what excites you because that's definitely a great place to start one of the key ingredients to success on YouTube is being absolutely passionate about the content that you make so that first step is thinking about what your passion is what is your channel going to be about and once you know the what, you can start to think about the why. Now, I've got some examples for you in regards to identifying that, that why, that goal. Why are you creating content? What are you aiming to achieve? What's your goal? What's your, your channel's mission? Got Mama Cherry, first one on the left. I want to inspire people to love and cook soul food. Super Sorrel in the middle. I want to create a community of adult nostalgic toy collectors. And Detailing World on the right hand side. I want to share my passion for cleaning cars. So no matter what your goal is and what the industry you're, you're working in, start to think about, have I got a clear goal? How, do I understand not only what my passion is, what I want to talk about, but now do I understand exactly why I'm here, why I want to create that content? Have I got a clear goal? Now, I'm going to throw this out to you. So in the chat, I would love for you to tell me and Samantha in the chat, have you got a what and a why? So out of everyone here, there's a few of you here. I can see um, in the chat, there's quite a few comments coming through. So what is your what and what is your why? What's your passion and why do you want to create that YouTube channel? And commit to it in the chat. Remember, I can't see you, I can't hear you, but I can have a conversation with you and Samantha can in that chat. So let us know. When it comes to creating your very own YouTube channel, what's your what and what's your why? So, for example, if I was into uh, music, I might say that my what, my passion is music. And my why might be to teach people how to play the guitar. That's why I want to create musical content for my YouTube channel. So start thinking about why and what you want to create. I love watching MCU movies and I want to create content talking about MCU. Nice. Love that. So you've got a passion for MCU movies and you want to actually create that conversation, that community of people that also share that passion, that want to look at your content when it comes to um, talking about MCU. Yeah, I mean, you could. Absolutely. You could broaden that you could say I, I love watching movies and go to that that next level absolutely yeah interesting so share them through Samantha will pass them on um as they come through in the chat um I'd like to I'd like to hear a few more I'd like to hear a few more of your what's and why's for your very own YouTube channel so the final step after the what and the why is the who 
who are you then going to create content for? And this is where we come to defining our audience. So not only do we want to think about why we're telling that story, but we want to start to think about who we're telling that story for. And if you can start to think about your audience before you create your, create your content, what's really great is that you can craft that content, tailor that co communication, the way that you put together those videos, you can tailor that to relate directly to the audience that you've curated as your target audience. It's really, really important. So break it down. Who are they? Think about all the details. Demographic information, are they parents? What's their household income? What's their geographical location? Do they have particular behaviours or interests, hobbies, music, sport? Think about what it is. Think about all of those individual details. So as an example, you want to create a persona. Now, a persona is a representation of your ideal YouTube subscribers. So this is the type of individual that you want and hope for them to come back time and time again to watch the videos, keep up to date with what you're posting, hopefully refer new subscribers, recommend your channel, potentially become brand ambassadors. So really start to think about creating a persona that you can check in with to make sure that you are creating content that really speaks to that audience that you've cra crafted. So on the right, we've got an example of Rohan. Rohan works nine to five, he's based in the UK. Car enthusiast, goes to car shows, takes pride in his car, frequents online forums, goes to YouTube to learn, and has two kids, so is always short of time. So when you're creating a persona, add as much detail as possible. Loads of people, loads of business owners will give their, their personas a unique name. They might add some kind of stock image that kind of gives them a visual representation of this type of person. So it'll give them that identity when you're writing that content. And then again, that description, summarise that persona, their hobbies, their desires, their frustrations, their passions. So it can be a really good tool for helping you really understand the type of content that you want to create for them. So then you have your what, you have your why, and you have your who. Then we can put them all together. And I can see uh, Great Dane Diving, videos of scuba diving and travel in Cyprus. Why? To open Cyprus for travellers who don't know Cyprus and eventually take them scuba diving. Yeah, amazing. Really good what and why there. Great Dane uh, Diving. So now we can put them all together. The what. For detailing world, the what, my passion is looking after cars. The why, I want to share my knowledge and teach others. And our who is that persona, Rowan. Now detailing world originally started as a forum. So if you remember, Rohan frequently looks at forums around his vehicle. So he's a perfect person to bring across into that YouTube channel. So in terms of starting to think about content ideas for that links to the passion, that fulfills our why and creates an interest for our car enthusiast, Rohan, we could potentially create videos showcasing tips on how to look after your car. So these three areas can help you really identify your niche and start to give you a clear idea of what you want to create and the type of content that's going to be most useful for your business. Which brings us to our first pausing for questions. I can't see any questions at the moment. I'm going to take a drink. How are we doing? So feel free again. If you have got any questions, please pop them in the chat. Samantha is there, ready and waiting. Um, and make sure we've got about half an hour to go. So yeah, if you've got any questions, pop them in there and I will come back to them in the next pausing for questions. 
So part two of today's session, creating engaging content. We've started to, to plan, we've started to think about who it's for and why we're doing it around our passion, but now we've actually got a plan and strategize from how are we going to curate the content through to what equipment do we need? So again, I'm going to throw it back to you as an audience. When you're watching content on YouTube, what do you think makes engaging YouTube content? Tell us in the chat. What for you makes that content enjoyable, makes you want to subscribe, makes you want to share it, makes you want to watch more? What, what makes great YouTube content? And there's no right or wrong answer here, because as we'll see, as these answers come through in the chat, this question is really about personal pr preference. It's really about what you enjoy, what's important to you as an audience member. And it's really interesting because all the answers that I, I get usually um, kind of involve anything from tech, making sure that the internet connection is great, the video is, is good, the, the audio is good, but then also through to the type of content. Oh, I want it to be engaging. I want it to be interesting, entertaining. Um, yeah, and I can see some, some um, comments coming through. High quality insights, yes. Uh, something you can relate to, your own passion and interest, absolutely. Anything funny? Well, I'm not going to start cracking out my knock-knock jokes, um, Zoom Academy. Uh, not Zoom Academy, who said that? Uh, Shamash, I'm not going to crack out my knock-knock my jokes for you. I don't know how funny you would find that. Um, are there any, I'll come back to the questions, Zoom Academy, I'm sure Samantha can log that for me. Uh, learning something new that's valuable to me. Yeah, absolutely, another great point there too. Great, so really you can start to see there's a few core things that we as humans really connect with when it comes to video content. And it is that storytelling, that relatability, how valuable is it to me watching this content? And also, depending on your niche, is going to depend on, on how you connect with people. So starting to think about those creative strategies that you can implement to start developing those engaging videos, build a community, build a loyal community, really important, and start to break down that step-by-step -step process to creating content. So we're going to break down these four key areas as a bit of a step-by-step -step strategy for you. The first part, research and plan. Give yourself that strong foundation to create the content by ensuring you've done your research and what people want, what people are looking for. Have your equipment ready. Know what you need, what you can start with, and then how you can build it if you're just getting going. Create your content. Have you got a process? How are you going to edit? How are you going to organize the setup and the design of that content? And finally, that edit process. How are you going to organize yourself to make sure you're posting that content in the right place at the right time? How are you going to make sure that you are in, in the right place at the right time with your content? So I think that Zoom Academy question, tools to search and research my niche. Wow, that's part one of our four steps that we're going to walk through. So starting with research, being really informed and being well informed on your industry can really kickstart those creative juices because we can get inspired. We can get inspired by exploring competitor content. Have a look at what other people are doing on YouTube and other, other channels. You know, go and have a look at other video channels. Go and look at TikTok. Go and look at the videos on Instagram because, of course, we have the, the short form content on YouTube as well. We've got those YouTube shorts. So go out and have a look at all video content in your niche and start gathering that inspiration. Get inspired by what already exists. Have you got any experts in your industry? Someone with experience that you can see how they've showcased their story. How can you learn from that and implement that into your own passion? And start to look at things like the news, trends, social media trends, current events that are directly related to what you do as an industry. 
How can you contribute to the conversation that's happening? Now on the right hand side, there's a couple of different tools. So the first one um, that's kind of behind, that's a tool called Google Trends. And now Samantha's gonna save and send you this tool in the chat. But Google Trends allows you to start to have a look at those search terms over periods of time in specific countries to start to think about what words are trending and where. How are they trending? How are they spiking throughout the year? Um, for example, the word unboxing, the search term unboxing tends to spike every year around November, December. So starting to think about that, maybe if you had a, um, a YouTube channel that focuses around shooting and editing unboxing videos, maybe you could bring that into your October, November strategy. So you're releasing these unboxing videos just as those, those traffic spikes start to happen. So Google Trends is a really great tool that you can use to start researching those specific search terms, those specific words that people are using in a search engine. And the other one is called Think with Google. It's part of the Think with Google and it's called Find My Audience. So it's a Think with Google tool um, and there's loads of, of really useful research resources that you can find. Um, there's, there's a few bits of data there that you can use to start exploring exactly what type of person, type of audience, what other content are they viewing on YouTube? What are the top five channels that your particular type of audience are potentially already engaging with? And it looks across different digital campaigns, industries, platforms and audiences um, from a few different perspectives to give you the data and the information behind that. So two tools there, Think with Google, uh, Find My Audience and Google Trends. Now, don't forget, when you're doing that research, if you are someone here in a position today where you've got an existing YouTube channel, don't forget about your YouTube analytics. Don't forget about utilizing the data that you've already got within your YouTube studio. Monitor the performance of not only your channel, individual videos, how that content is performing, um, how many people have watched that video and how long they've watched that content for. You can also start to find out information on your specific demographic, your audience. And you can use that to, for later on, our third part, thinking about how you measure and track your process and your progress. So once you've researched step one, the next part is to think about what content you want to create. And there's a few different types of content that you can co create for your channel. So first of all, consider the resources you have, the time you have, and what you can realistically achieve in your day to day. That's really, really important. And then you can start looking at the types of content that you can create. So we've got one off videos. This is where you can get your message across really quickly, impactfully, and they don't really have to have a coherent theme, for example. Regular short form video, keeping that video under three minutes, so it's short, it's sweet, it's to the point, um, but what you can have, because it's regular, you can have that coherent theme. You can have a playlist of short form regular videos. And then you've got the other side to that, that longer form video. Anything over three minutes where you are wanting to keep your visitors, your viewers engaged for that longer period of time. So these tend to be things like podcasts, um, interviews, live streams, mini documentaries. So starting to think about how you can create that longer form video. And finally, you could create a series. You can take as long as you want to tell your story. And you can create either a series on different topics, different videos that connect together. So you might have part one, part two, part three. And you can either release part one, two and three all together, all in one go. Or what you can do is release part one on one week, part two the following week and part three on the third week to really start to get people waiting and, and anticipating what you're gonna post. Really interesting. 
The next thing you might want to think about is a release schedule. Now, release schedules are really common when you start to see kind of anything to do with broadcasting. But for your purposes on your YouTube channel, we're starting to think about, okay, how many videos can you release per week? And what days of the week are you going to release on? Now, having a set number of recurring releases that are linked to specific days of the week are going to ensure that you make that connection with your audience, where they're going to expect your channel to be posting content on that day at that time of the week. But also asking yourself, are you going to rotate the content type? So some creators, they don't always create the same type of content throughout the week. So they might post something that is short and sweet. They might use YouTube shorts at one point, but then they'll create something that's a higher production value uh, later on in the week that draws a different type of attention. So starting to think about, are you going to rotate that content type? And are you going to link that content to anything specific in terms of the days of the week? So Tech Review Tuesday, Fun Facts Friday. How are you going to connect that to the specific days of the week? Now, just like any story, a video, a piece of content has a structure. So each piece of content that you create wants to have the structure like a story, a beginning, a middle, an end. The beginning where you hook your audience in, you introduce the aim of your video and why you're there. The middle, this is the main part of the content. So what are you trying to communicate? How are you going to engage your audience in that conversation? And the end is where we have our CTA, which stands for call to action. How are you going to be as clear as possible to tell your audience exactly what you want them to do next? So actively asking for comments, likes, subscribers, focusing on the benefits of them subscribing rather than just trying to sell the subscribe. Really think about the beginning, the middle and the end of of each of your videos and how you're going to structure that. The next step, we start thinking about writing for video. How are you going to create the understanding, the structure of how that video is going to work. Are you going to speak directly to the audience? Are you going to um, create a script? Now, if you create a script, depending on the type of video or the complexity of the video you're creating, you might find that you write a full script that has very specific dialogue for the people that are on camera. But sometimes um, people will write a sort of list of key bullet points around the topics that that they want to cover in that video. But either way, make sure whatever you write in that script is written the way that you would say it. Anyone had that that experience where they've written something and and it sounds really good when they read it in their head, then they read it out loud and it sounds really alien to them? Yeah, we want to avoid that. So make sure you write the script for that video or those bullet points in the way that you would say them colloquially, naturally. And once you've written that script, read it out loud. Not only do you want to write it with your own flair, your own tone of voice, but read it out loud. That is the only way to sort of find out whether your way of delivering what you've written feels natural. And if it doesn't, you can make some changes, you can read it out loud again and make sure everything sits correctly. Once that dialogue's clear, you now can can roughly time yourself and and speak that script out loud and understand, okay, roughly how much footage you're going to need to shoot and what type of shots you need. Are you going to use a voiceover? Are you going to um, kind of use the, the audio in the film that you're making? If you're going to use a voice note over, it's worth noting to shoot a couple of extra bits of footage just to make sure in terms of the pauses when someone's speaking, you've got enough visual that's that's going to work with that voiceover. A good way to plan your shots could be using a storyboard. Now, you don't have to be an amazing artist to use the storyboard. You don't have to be someone to... Um, 
you know, drawing Picasso level drawings in these storyboards. But you can clearly plan out your beginning, your middle and end. And use stick men if you need to. But start to think about the details, the visuals, the audio, the props that you might need. And do you need any help? Do you need any crew? Now, when we say crew, um, when I was recording a few of my early kind of music videos for YouTube, I um, my crew was my, my younger brother running across fields in North Wales, um, kind of filming me with my guitar. So it really doesn't have to be like a paid for crew, you know, but definitely thinking about, do I need help? Do I need somewhere where someone can make sure my angles are right? Do I need someone to pass me something from out of shot? What do you need? Which then brings you to your equipment. And you can start with what you have. Loads of people think, all right, I'm creating video for YouTube. I need to turn my garage into a studio. I need to like make this really work for me. And actually, the beauty of it is that you probably already have most of the things you need to get started. Camera. Have you got a phone with a camera? Even without a tripod, you can balance your phone somewhere. Good old balance with the books or something in order to steady that camera and put it at a, a, a good enough height to film your starting content. Lighting, lighting's super, super important because it can make what that, that visual look like. It can really create a balance. If you haven't got any lighting that you can have indoors, film in the daytime and sit by a window. Film outside, although be careful with sound pollution, but it's definitely could sit by a window, use natural lighting. And then finally, start to think about your options, depending on the device you've got when it comes to that video editing software. Now, as a, a top level piece of, of something that you can use, YouTube Studio does have its own quick editing kind of touch ups available where you can edit um, end screens, you can edit and trim out sections that of that video that you don't want, that you don't feel is, is right. So YouTube Studio does have that, that kind of most basic software there for you as well. Once you've got the basics and you've started creating that, that um, content, you can then start adding to that equipment. You can upgrade that basic equipment. You might want to add a tripod at first, something that's going to be steady, that's going to give it that more professional look. You can start thinking about lighting. Are you going to be able to purchase some affordable LED lighting? Have you got a microphone? Have you got something that you can use to create quality sound, especially if you're going to be doing the sound um, overlaid or separate, filming it separate to the visual? And finally, as you get more experienced, you might want to start having a look at some more sophisticated editing programs. That's not the YouTube Studio. If you've got a Mac like the picture, you might want to use something like iMovie, which is still free. It's still something you can use. If you're on a Windows device, have a have a search, have a Google, have a look for free uh, video editing software that you can use on a Windows device. There's a few that you can use on your phone where you can create, film, and edit from your, your mobile device. So really start to think about what's gonna be best for you and the videos you're creating. So some top tips to think about. Think about what can be seen in the background. What's on your clothes? Have you got big prints that potentially you can avoid? The, the kind of like, um, patterns, stripes, zigzags can sometimes not come out too well on a camera. So thinking about the prints that you're wearing or prints that are in the background. So go for clear, clean, crisp backgrounds. Think about any logos that can be seen, any music that can be heard. Is If there's music in the background, have you got permission to post that on YouTube? 
is it royalty free music or is it music that actually you you can't have on in the background choose your space carefully try and find a room that that's not too echoey you don't want to sit in the bathroom for example <laughs> you want something with carpets you want to avoid that over echo in your space and then think about movements camera positions think about um if you're going to be sat sat still in the video making sure you know where your your boundaries are of that that camera angle and making sure that you're you're not going out of frame constantly really important so really working through some of these steps before you get to filming, it's going to allow you to have a much better experience when it comes to shooting that footage because it's also going to make the editing process easier because you're going to have everything. You're going to have everything you need worked out step by step. So to finish off our middle section, thinking about those five basic steps to editing. The best time to start thinking about editing is during that writing phase, starting to think about exactly how you want things to fit together. So that's why that storyboard really comes in handy because it can allow you to envision exactly what that video is going to look like really early on in that planning process. Now, there's no single method for editing, but there are a few things that, that stick out as the five steps that would be included within your basic edit process. So the first one is starting to think about importing or organizing your footage. So if you're recording and editing um, on your phone, then this first step, you wouldn't be importing, but you would definitely wanna start to, to look at and organize any footage that you've taken. It's gonna make it easier to know where everything sits and everything lives. Second, you want to add visuals, you want to add sound effects. Make sure that you're thinking about things like any title pages, transitions, intros or outros. You've got those options. Remember those, sometimes less is more when it comes to effects. Check your sound. I said earlier, sometimes when I ask that question, what makes great YouTube content? I get a lot of people say, oh, great sound and great quality video. Nobody said it today, but it is a really common answer that I get. So we want to try in that editing process to close our eyes and listen to that video with our eyes closed. Can we understand it? Does it make sense even if we're sat there? with our eyes closed? Does it make sense? And then finally, step four and five, you can make any color corrections. So depending on the project, you might wanna do some color corrections and just make sure the brightness and the colors all match consistently throughout the shots. And then you can export and upload your video. Review that the video is, is exactly how you want it. It's how it, how it, exactly how it want, you wanted it to look and sound. And then you can export that and, and upload that publishing to YouTube. Now we've got a link that we're gonna share with you in the chat that will take you to the YouTube Creators Academy. It will definitely help you in regards to going into a little bit deep, into deeper information when it comes to the basic edit and, and making sure that those edits really work. And that brings us to our second pausing for questions. Now I've already answered the question within this, are there any tools to search and research my niche? I've given you a couple of those tools. Can I see any more questions? A playful learner talking about thumbnails. Um, suggest an app. I mean, if you wanna keep it really, really simple for creating your thumbnails for your YouTube, think about uh, tools like Canva, you can use that for free. It will have templates that you can use as well. So that could be a good shout. Um, in terms of generating attractive titles, mm, might have to let uh, Samantha find something for that second half playful learner. My brain is not, not thinking on the top of his head. But definitely in regards to creating those thumbnails, think about a tool like Canva. If you have more experience with different design tools, they, they could definitely help you create thumbnails that are really appealing to your audience. Okay, 
To finish up our last 15 minutes together, let's start thinking about how we can then get discovered and really track the success of our YouTube content. And that's what our final section is going to highlight. It's to start thinking about simple ways that we can make sure our content is discovered and how we can track whether it is successful. How do we know if we're moving closer to the goal that we set ourselves um, and what's available to support us further? So enhance your videos discovery. Once you upload your video, it's really important that you include things like searchable video titles, searchable descriptions, and also tagging up your videos and including those tags, you're adding tags to make it easier for people to find your video, even if they're not specifically looking for it. And then of course, we want to promote it. We want to tell people about it. We want to make sure people know that our, our content is out there. So in order to make your content searchable in YouTube, remember, it's the second largest search engine next to Google in the world. So we want to create well-written descriptions with the right keywords, which means we need to understand our keywords. We want to use popular terms around what we're creating content on to get in front of the right people at the right time. There's a great tool within Google Ads as, a, as another tool for you to write down that's called the Google Keyword Planner. And that can really, really help you start to, to figure out what words are being searched for in regards to that audience. You can also use the autocomplete suggestion. So you can see on the right hand side, when you start typing anything into YouTube or into a search engine, you get that drop down that gives you those autocomplete parts. That autocomplete section is suggestions or are suggestions of what previous people or the most popular queries that have gone through the search engine that include those words that you're typing. So start to think about what your target audience is already out there looking for in those autocompletes. And once you've done that research, you can then write searchable titles and searchable descriptions where you reinforce those important keywords that are describing exactly what your video is gonna feature, what it's about. So reinforce those important words. Uh, mini mer lemon meringue pies, easy dessert recipe. Identify the content type, 10 steps or how to. Um, reaction. So start identifying in those titles and descriptions the, the content type that someone's going to find if they press play. And you can label any of those videos with a brand or with a series. So you can see Star Wars, the rise of Star, Walk, Star Walker trailer. So really starting to label with anything that's directly related to the interests of your audience. And when it comes to those descriptions, keep them short but visible. Consider how that description is going to start so that it can be really easily read because there is that truncation that happens within a, um, a description. So whatever, before it cuts off and you get that little see more drop down, you want to make sure that that first sentence makes complete sense. Make sure you're adding those video tags, which was that third bullet point that we had. In the top, above your actual title for your video, those three tags, those three um, first tabs will appear. So you can see that here we've got hashtag haul, hashtag toy haul, hashtag shopping haul on Super Sorrel's toy haul, Marvel Legends, Star Wars, Black Series, comics, G.I. Joe, Fortnite, pop vinyls and more. So we can start to see some of those, those tags that are including words from a mix of our title and our um, description and synonyms of those words to encourage people to find the content we're creating. So a quick tip around that, consider information not communicated in your title and description and think about how you as a user would search for video. 
And the final step is promoting, building your community, promoting what you're doing, starting to integrate your YouTube channel through to the other places on, on your online presence that you have. So you can see at the top, subscribe and get social with me. And we can see Facebook, we can see Instagram, we can see the Twitter there. So starting to connect your community across the board of all of those online places that, that you have. And vice versa, if you've got a Instagram, if you've got a Facebook business page, making sure you highlight how people can find you on YouTube across those other platforms, really, really important. And this is an example of Mama Sherry really linking all of her online channels together and, and kind of pointing people forward to the wider range. Now, finally, when it's when you're thinking about measurements and you're thinking about how you can understand whether you've been successful or not come back to the what the why and the who for that we talked about at the beginning of this session and you can use analytics to start to understand more and more about your users analytics on youtube record your channel's progress they start it starts to record who's watching the time of day they're watching where in the world they're watching as well as starting to think about how long a user stayed, a viewer stayed on a particular piece of content. Now to access that analytics page, you wanna make sure you're signed into your YouTube account in the top right where you get the circle with the letter of your name or the logo that you've uploaded. You wanna click on that and you wanna to go to YouTube Studio. Once you're in YouTube Studio, you'll see a menu like what you can see on the left-hand side of the screen. And you want to click on analytics. Great. Then once you're in analytics, you can see that you get an act, you get access to a range of different pieces of data. And it will initially start in this overview page, which is exactly what it says on the tin, an overview of everything that's happening on that particular channel. Then what you can do is use those tabs along the top to dive in to different parts of the data. So you've got reach viewers, interest viewers, build an audience and earn revenue. So you can start to, to drop through and look at those pages. Where have people got to come to your channel from? So what's the source of your traffic? Um, what creators your audience has an affinity for? So what are the most popular other, other content creators that are not you that this particular audience really engage with the stats that you can gather in this youtube analytics is going to help you know exactly what's working on your channel and what's not working which means you can start to build you can start to change you can start to adapt your channel to make sure it's suiting the audience that you're driving and that audience that you want to attract to watch your content and engage with your business. Now, again, we're gonna pop in a link to a Google support page in the chat for you. It's really gonna help you because we're not gonna spend too much time on it here. This link is gonna help you further understand and get the most out of your YouTube analytics. So definitely head over to that support.google link that Samantha's gonna share in the chat. And definitely check it out after the session. We also do have a fantastic session on getting started with analytics. So I'd recommend that you do check that out in the schedule as well as an upcoming session that you might want to attend. Just if you're here today and you're thinking, I am a real novice in this area, attend as many sessions as you can humanly make. So that get started with analytics session is going to really help you get that overview of exactly why data is important and how, most importantly, you can gather that insight from the data and make data driven marketing decisions for your business. Now, to start rounding up, we're coming to the end of our session today. Start to think about that final step measuring your success on YouTube. Now, success on YouTube is not just all about counts and followers or subscribers. It's really about what matters to you as an organization. Is your content reaching your intended audience, the people you want it to reach? Are, how, are they watching your videos? Are they listening to what you've got to say? And finally, are they even interested? Are they commenting? Are they engaging? Are they connecting with other platforms that, that are not part of YouTube? 
And there's a couple of bits of terminology that you can also refer to when it comes to finding the right information. So if you had the question, I'd love to know if my content is reaching users, then you want to look at that metric impressions. An impression is logged every time a viewer comes across one of your video thumbnails on YouTube. So be aware that it doesn't include direct traffic, actual clicks, whether that's from notifications, end screens or external links. But think of each impression as a potential reach on YouTube and an opportunity to earn a new view. The second question, are my viewers hearing and watching my video through content? Well, there's two metrics that we can keep an eye on here. The click through rate, the CTR, that's going to show us which, what percentage of impressions on YouTube have been turned directly into views or actionables, depending on what your video videos have and your call to actions are. Now, the, the click-through rates is really interesting to keep an eye on because it's, it will be um, displayed as a percentage. In that middle section, you've also got looking at the, the views themselves. YouTube video views reflect how many times a video has been watched. And it can be super, super important to measure when it comes to starting to classify the popularity of each individual video on your channel. And the final one there, are my viewers interested? Really important. Now, there's a measurement called the average view duration. So the average view duration will give you that estimated average minutes that are, have been watched uh, per view on a piece of content. So that's really important to know because it's going to allow us to understand how long our customers are watching a video before they then move on to a different piece of content. How long are we keeping them engaged? Then you also have the watch time. So the watch time is charting how long viewers have spent watching your content in total. And it gives you a, a bit of a sense of what viewers are actually looking for. What do they actually want to watch? Not just getting a, getting a click or getting a, um, a click and then a, a backspace that they've abandoned moving through into that. So once you have all your results, you can start to adapt, you can start to change, you can start to approach your content with a, a slight different view on understanding what you need to do next in order to be successful in the way that you define success. Which brings us to our final pausing for questions. We have covered a lot in that session over the past hour. So let's have a bit of a recap, a refresh of some of those takeaways. So first step, find your niche. What is your what? What is your why? And who is your who? So find your niche, answer those questions and start to think about what's your passion and how are you going to create a real solid foundation to create content with purpose? The second part, create an engaging content? How can you capture, capture the attention of your audience and take your time before you jump into just filming content? Research and plan. Choose the right type of content for you. Be consistent. Create with confidence. Really, really important. And then finally, getting found and tracking your success. Don't forget the detail. Keywords. Are going to help people, human beings, find your content, find your service, find your products. Use the data to make those decisions. If you haven't got any other platforms like a, a website or anything like that yet, don't worry. Use the existing platforms that you have to really start to understand some of those analytics and that data so you can make clear decisions. And never be afraid to try new content. So that brings us to the very end of our creating video for YouTube session today. What I do want to say is make sure you head over to our website, the Google Digital Garage website, where you can find an entry level course called the Fundamentals in Digital Marketing. It is a certificated course. You get it's uh, it's put together in partnership with the Open University. So go and check that out. Really, really important. And those of you based in the UK. Remember, g.co forward slash UK mentoring. 
another reminder that you can book a full one hour one-to-one mentoring session with a Google Digital Garage mentor or coach trainer and walk through some of those digital disciplines that you feel you need to brush up on a little bit more. So other than that, we're coming to the end of our time together today. Thank you so much for engaging with me. And there's a few questions that have come through as well. I'm going to wrap up here, but I hope it's been really useful and a, and a bit of a useful dive for you into creating videos for YouTube. As I mentioned at the beginning of the session, if you're interested in more of our upcoming schedule, please do look at that link in the description of the video or check out the link in the chat from Samantha. Other than that, thank you very much. And I look forward to welcoming you to many more Google Digital Garage training sessions in the future. Have a great day.